it's cool to give someone to look up to and know that if I can do it, that the girls can do it too. So if I can just continue to be that ambassador for women, I mean, that's the future. Women are the future. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> In 2020, the Indian Challenger officially became the king of the baggers. These are the stories of three teams and riders prepared to defend the crown. Progress does not occur without change. This principle is no more evident than it is in racing, where success is a function of ongoing trial and error, adjustments, and tweaks. In most cases, changes are microscopic, a fraction of an inch to gain a fraction of a second, and perhaps even a checkered flag. But there are times when change is required on a more macro level. Such was the case for the Saddleman team following its effort at the inaugural King of the Baggers in 2020. Despite a masterfully customized and race-engineered Harley-Davidson road glide, the team finished middle of the pack. Meanwhile, the only two teams in the field running Indian Challengers finished first and third. So for the 2021 King of the Baggers race at Laguna Seca, the Saddleman team made the switch to the Indian Challenger. Well, last year the experience was awesome. We really didn't know what performance baggers were. We decided we were gonna define it. We had ended up coming up with a bike that was way better than what we had anticipated, though we didn't finish. We wanted to go ahead and try to do even better. We had hooked up with Indian and they provided a bike for us and we just couldn't wait to try out the Challenger. But for Saddleman, the change in bikes would not be the only major adjustment. After having Michael Woolaway pulling double duty as mechanic and rider, the team decided to put a new rider on the bike. And much like it switched from the Harley to the Indian Challenger, the team moved away from the beaten path in a direction profoundly different. Veteran road racer Patricia Fernandez was chosen to pilot the Indian Challenger. Well, Patricia's full of energy. She's been professionally racing for many, many years. She uh, came out to Chuck Walla one day and said, I want to get on that bike. And she got on the bike and smoked on it. I mean, she was full of piss and vinegar. You know what I mean? She was just unbelievable. So we were really excited. We originally were going to use her for the Hooligan Series. And uh, we said, hey, would you like to go ahead and try the bagger? And she goes, heck yeah. You know, we were really excited to be the, the first woman team out here in the King of Baggers. And I think she's gonna continue to dial it up and, and give it game at, yeah, every time she runs. For Saddleman owner Dave Eckert, doing things differently is nothing new. He's built Saddleman with relentless attention to detail and a mindset of what's next. Always pushing forward, taking calculated risks and doing things differently. I got into building boats and my dogs got away one day and bumped into my future business partner. He had kids the same age as my kids and we ended up selling a pan head to go ahead and start Saddleman. And we would go along and go to lights and try to gauge when we'd see a person riding a motorcycle and we'd hand them a card and say, hey, if you want a seat for that, let us borrow the bike and we'll do the tooling. And that's kind of where the start of the, the company really happened. We now have 110 employees, three locations throughout the United States. Our stuff is American made. We build roughly 800 seats a day. We ship a truckload of seats out of our factory every day and it's pretty amazing. We just need to stay ahead of everybody else by a little bit. So we, we slow walk it every day. We don't forget where we came from and we continue to do what we do and we plan on being here for hopefully longer than I am around. <laughs> At the heart of the Saddleman racing operation is Michael Woolaway, a revered and respected craftsman affectionately known throughout the industry as Wooly. In an industry characterized by all that is loud, bold, and brash, Wooly is anything but. Reserved and cerebral, Wooly's calm, pensive demeanor belies the aggressive nature of his beastly two-wheeled creations. An artist who opts for hammers, English wheels, and welding torches over brushes and paints, Wooly's creations have solidified his place among the world's elite customizers. Well, in 1967, my family moved to Marin County, to Tiburon, and we, we moved a couple blocks away from Mert Lawwell. And I was a little kid and he, he built all his mile bikes in his garage. I just grew up in motorcycle mecca. I've been riding and racing motorcycles since I was a little kid. And back then you couldn't, there was no internet, you couldn't order parts. There were no aftermarket part companies. So you had to develop 
the bike yourself. And, and I just spent most of my time in school and metal shop. And later in life, I was working in the film industry and prepping a bike for Pikes Peak. And I met Orlando Bloom, who showed up on a, the same bike I was prepping, but and I knew all the problems. So I said, come by my garage and I'll do some work on it. And that ended up being a $40,000 bike build. And then it was Ryan Reynolds and Bruce Springsteen and Billy Joel. And it's just, just snowball effect after that. Primarily, I like to make stuff with my hands. I don't work on the computer. I don't draw things. I, I just, I see the shape of my head and I, I translate it to paper and then aluminum. With the Indian Challenger as his newest canvas, Wooly delivered yet another of his masterful transformations, where form refuses to compromise function, the ultimate marriage of beauty and beast. The Challenger, you know, started out as a, really a much better platform to build a race bike out of. I made a handmade aluminum tank, but I kept the outline of the Challenger and I kept the crown of the Challenger, but it's much narrower and the knee pockets are cut out. We had to put 100 pounds of weight on the bottom of it to make it legal for this series. I made Pro Molly radiator struts and we made a handmade two inch thick aluminum radiator for cooling. We made a custom seat section, pedestal carbon fiber seat section. I removed the pins that locate the subframe to the mainframe so we can pull a few bolts off and take the bags and the fender and everything off. I remade the fender, keeping the basic fender shape, but I put like a 1960s scallop detail in it. And I kind of built the bike to, to bar bang a bit, you know, not knowing what was gonna happen at the time and who was gonna ride it. The bold and the beautiful. Never have these words been more personified than by Patricia Fernandez. She spent a lifetime defying expectations, breaking boundaries, and kicking gender assumptions and expectations to the curb. My brother and sister never broke a bone, never did anything, and my parents said I made up for it. We knew the ER doctors by name. <laughs> But I was always that way. I can, one of my first memories I remember, I think I was in second or third grade and we did military fitness, health, physical fitness every year in school. I was in military school. And I remember coming home one day and I was crying to my mom upset because I wanted to compete on the men's course and they wouldn't let me and I cried to my mom. So my mom being a strong woman that she is, was like, well, I'm gonna go with you to school the next day. She was like, who cares? Let her finish hers and if she wins, just let her go and practice. What is it gonna hurt? So he let me do it and I beat all the men and I was the first girl to like climb the rope and ding the bell. And my mom said that was one of her most proud moments. If I wanted to do what men did, I just was going to have to work harder if I was really determined. That's always what they taught me from the beginning. Taking her skills to racing circuits around the world and going bar to bar against elite male riders, she is living proof that stereotypes about a woman's place or a man's game are flat out ludicrous. I can't really describe when it started. I like motorcycles. I always thought they were cool. I always asked my parents for one and they always told me no. Uh, so the first loan I ever got, I to the bank, got a little $4,000 used banana seat motorcycle. I thought I was Steve McQueen. <laughs> just learned in a parking lot and then I started riding. I never planned on racing, I was just riding on the street and a bunch of my friends started doing track days. And so they're like, you should really do one. I was in college and pretty broke, so I eBayed a suit, eBayed boots and saved up all winter. I just started doing track days and it was fun. It was exhilarating, it was liberating. And I went way faster than I think I was. I was bumped up to intermediate immediately the first weekend and then I kept doing it. I was in an advanced group and they told me I should maybe try club racing and I was like, oh, okay, so try club racing. I won a bunch of championships, got bumped up to expert. I was winning championships and they were like, oh, you should try for a pro race. And I never thought I would do it. It was just kind of like people around me seeing the potential, I guess. And it just kept happening. Every time a door opened, I took it. So I went pro, I started racing pro, and then I started getting invites to go international. So anytime get, anyone gave me an opportunity to ride, I took it. For Patricia, Femininity is not something to be avoided or discouraged. At the same time, it doesn't define her. It's simply one aspect of who she is. I prefer the racer side over the modeling side. I'm way more comfortable with the helmet on. But it was something I didn't start doing until the last few years where I had a really good female influence in the marketing industry. And she told me that, you know, you're a girl. Like, you should market yourself as a girl and use an opportunity. I have something that none of the guys have out there, you know? It's amazing to give women someone to cheer for, or even men. There's racers out there that have little girls or have girlfriends, and I get to meet all these ladies and inspire them, and I absolutely love it. Being a woman is more than just being feminine and pretty. I can be feminine, I can do my hair, I can do my makeup, and I can throw my leg over a 600-pound motorcycle and go out there and make some boys cry. Equally as feminine and awesome.
She naturally embodies a duality that shatters female stereotypes and celebrates the reality that there are no boundaries to who, what, or how a woman should be. A lot of women don't know that you can do it until they see someone else out there doing it. So setting the bar to show them that it's possible that you can go out there and do it. I met so many women all the way from children that, you know, it's the first time they ever saw a female racer ever. And it's just like super fangirl moments to grown women that said they've always wanted to ride and they asked me how I learned to ride. You know, you deserve everything you've ever wanted, but you have to work for it and you have to go for it. Like you can't, nothing's ever gonna be handed to you. If you want some job you never had, like girl, you can get it, but you have to go out there and get it. No one's gonna hand it to you. So if I can encourage even just one lady to get her license and try something she's never tried before, I'm happy. It's an idyllic California setting at WeatherTech Raceway for round three of Moto America's 2021 King of the Baggers series. Patricia Fernandez could not be more optimistic about throwing a leg over the Indian Challenger and putting your skills to an entirely new test. I mean, I do like the phrase Queen of the Baggers. It's pretty cool, it's unique because obviously it's a King of the Baggers series and I'm the first ever female to compete on one of these bikes, so it's awesome. Obviously to be the queen, I would think you would have to win. But even if I don't win, I'm definitely gonna be the princess of the baggers. I mean, I can take that. I can handle being the princess. She's younger and cuter, right? <laughs> this weekend's Moto America festivities also include the first ever Super Hooligan Road Race, a hodgepodge of modified V-twin cruisers and metric road machines slugging it out on the famed pavement at Laguna Seca. In a last minute decision that comes as no surprise to anyone, Fernandez decides to double dip and add the Super Hooligan race to her weekend agenda. However, in this race, she'll be running a bone stock Indian FTR. Honestly, I've never ridden an FTR. I'm super impressed with the power and how smooth it is. And the fact that the first time I ever rode it and I'm out there beating fully prepped race bikes is amazing. It makes me feel good. This weekend, fiance and veteran road racer Corey West is along for the ride, literally. He'll also be competing in the King of the Baggers and Super Hooligan events. This gives way to a unique relationship dynamic between the soon-to-be Mr. and Mrs. West. It blows my mind, you know, when she gets out there and, and puts her mind to something, there's, there's no stopping her. You know, I try to tell her sometimes, oh, you should be careful doing this or watch out for doing that. And she just kind of looks at me like, yeah, whatever. Corey and I both being in the same classes for the Bagger and the Hooligan does spark a little bit of rivalry. Um, it's pretty interesting. I mean, one's a boy, one's a girl. We're also dating. He's on a Harley, I'm on an Indian. So there's definitely smack talk going on. I'd be proud if he did beat me, but it's not gonna happen. Lining up on the grid for the main events, there are no males or females, kings or queens, husbands or wives. It's simply racer against racer, skill versus skill. For Patricia Fernandez, success need not be measured on a podium. In fact, victory is realized with every challenge accepted every obstacle overcome, and the multitude of women, young and old, she inspires. I'm so incredibly proud to be the first ever female to race a bagger. You know, that's amazing, and I was the only female competitor in the bagger class and the hooligan class. And I am so proud of that. No one can ever take that away from me. But what makes me like a better feeling is knowing that there's so many talented females out there that have the potential to ride or, or get better. And I would love to see more ladies out there racing and even on the twins or the hooligans or any other baggers, but getting more female advocates out there for riding. It's cool to give someone to look up to and know that if I can do it, that the girls can do it too. So if I can just continue to be that ambassador for women, I mean, that's the future. Women are the future. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs>